So at any rate, I am going to uh, talk about the offering, which is a crossword of 53 words. The offering was created in, uh, it came about in 2014. It was named in 2018, if I remember correctly, by my wife, Lisa. Um, the original offering was colored in by my son, Jack. One night while we went out to uh, dinner with my wife, he wrote all the words out on a big uh, one-inch square grid paper and recreated the offering in a larger format and colored it in over a few different days. The offering came about in a very organic way. It uh, was something I was not planned. I never thought about it. Uh, never thought about I never set out to create the offering or design it the way it is. It, uh, it really was a result of being in, in a uh, in a bad state of mind or a depressed state of mind, asking for answers through prayer and contemplation. And uh, after totally surrendering to a higher power and an appeal to God and a smackdown of my ego, and I just gave gave up trying to figure things out and I prayed and and there is a longer story there on my website which I won't go into all of it but I just had a pen and paper and the word love uh, appeared on the paper I wrote out the word love and then I wrote out the word joy in an intersecting way and then the word peace as the third word in an intersecting way. So love was horizontal joy coming down and peace coming down vertically. Those three words, love, joy, and peace, were the beginning of the offering. And love was, in fact, the first word on paper. And somehow the offering came through me. I believe God was working through me. And these words just started to come down. I, I be became obsessed with filling in other words and uh, it was almost like I was in a trance or taken over or hypnotized in a way. I, a lot of my other fears and concerns melted away and I lost myself in this crossword. At the time, it, it seemed like it was procrastination, like I had other things I needed to be doing. Of course I did. My ego was telling me that, but this took over, and I enjoyed being lost in it. I remember thinking, all I want to do is focus on this and do it and write it, and these words just kept showing up on, on the paper, uh, intersecting more words. So so what happened is I, as I started to get these words down, I don't remember exactly how many. I may have been 10. 20 words into it and it was just kind of handwritten out sloppy and then as I the words started to grow in numbers I went and got quarter inch graph paper and because I, I wanted to keep the line straight and the intersecting it was it was hard to keep it all uniform so I got graph paper and I started to write the words in that way and and at some point my uh, you know my all my kids and my wife my children Jack, Olivia, Julie, and my wife, Lisa, they would say, oh, what are you doing? What are you working on? And, you know, at, at, they became excited about it, just seeing me do this. And I remember I had at a, a few points, I had a good number of words in there on the graph paper. And I would rewrite them multiple times on different sheets. And then my daughters would start filling in with colors. That was the first idea of coloring actually, was they took those words, even though it was incomplete, and they started drawing in and coloring, uh, highlighting it, if you will. And there's some pictures of that on my on my website. I do believe there was some words in here that, that, that my family contributed. And, you know, I'm looking for a word, and they tell oh, how about this word or that word? But it was truly organic and, and inspired, a creation really through God. So, that was exciting, but as the um, thing kept going, I, I truly was the one that was obsessed with it in a, in a very odd way. And I did finish the words, and there was a point in time where 
and again, I had total support from my family. Just encouragement and just, you know, it's a nice thing. Just no different than if you're, someone was painting something, you would go in and say, oh, what are you painting? Oh, it looks beautiful artwork. And you'd compliment it and, and be part of it. So great to have my family there. And then I got done and there was a point where it, it, it was just came to me, no more words. It was almost like God said, all right, no more words. You are done. It's it. You're finished. And uh, also there was a couple points where I thought it may have been done, but I knew it wasn't. And I knew something was missing. And then there was, the, you know, at the very end, it was that, okay, it was this weird, where's the finish line? And then it, it was known to me, no more. So uh, then I wrote out one really nice copy on, um, well, fairly nice copy on quarter inch uh, grid paper. And, you know, I had that and I made photocopies and, and things like that. And then, you know, there was a time where we were going out to dinner and, uh, we had some one inch square construction paper, like construct the, the one inch grid paper from a project we were working on in the basement. So my, we were going out to dinner. I said to my son, I get that paper and he, he went down and actually found it and, wrote rewrote it, the words on that and colored it in uh and that became his project and that uh there's some pictures of that on the website or other in the stages when it was like halfway done and then finished so that was a really uh, interesting thing when it was all done it was just nice to look at and it felt good to be complete i didn't really realize what the power of what it was. It was just nice to see it. And I did have a full sense of, of, uh, completion and I felt good about it, but I really didn't understand the, the power within it and the potential and the knowledge and information and the latent energy within this work until sometime later, it was a while. We did take that, uh, pay that, uh, finished product which was like 33 inches by 20 something inch 80 inches or so high 33 wide by 28 something like that and we had it framed I took it to a frame shop and had them frame frame it and then I hung it hung it in the uh, office in the basement so that's really where that started in terms of the creation of the offering now what led up to that is my whole life story which was really a culmination of failure and ignorance and living in the dark for the early years of my life and subsequently you know just you come to the realization is look everything is wrong I haven't you know every decision I'm making is wrong you start to question everything and then you you do ultimately surrender and you ask God for help and I I surrendered many times in my life at different points one big one was when I I had to quit drinking it was killing me that was one uh, point where I surrendered, and I, I have a good story on that, which we'll get into another time. But really, this is the end result of pain and suffering, ignorance and darkness. And it served me in the end, and, and, and ultimately, looking back, all of that pain and suffering is, is my greatest asset, greatest asset. And you can never talk about your pain when it's alive and well in you and when it's like there's a lot of raw. If you're in the storm, you can never really talk about it. You can never really write about it. You can't share about it because you're still fighting the battle. And but now looking back and and when you're fighting the battle, you're you're in a resentment mode and you're angry. And now as I look back, I would not trade in any of that. I wouldn't all those you know, used to be, well, there were mistakes, but they're also my journey. So they're my assets and, and I would not trade those in all the pain I caused others, all the pain I caused myself. It truly is an asset for me now. And if I can use my knowledge and experience, and I still have way, way more to learn and grow. I'm not done. I mean, I'm just getting started. However, if I can teach what I did know already and learn and do something to give back to people. That's what I want to do. And I am still, uh, and I will be for the rest of my life growing, learning, contemplating, praying, 
I'll still be making mistakes. I make them every day. But now I'm aware of them a little more and trying to really own my decisions, taking ownership and responsibility for what I'm doing and trying to be the best person I can be and make an impact in a positive way for humanity. So, oh, but but going back a little bit to after the offering was completed, I had serious emotional whiplash and these violent struggles between being in, you know, when I was immersed in, the, in creating this, I felt so good. I just, everything, I w- truly felt good about everything, as I said, being lost. But then my ego would creep in and I would get out and doing things in the, and it didn't take long. And my, my brain is saying, you know, what's wrong with you? You know, you're, you know. 40 some year you're a grown man and you're uh, sitting down writing words in a crossword. You have responsibilities. You have things you need to do. You, you know, you were just wasting time. You know, it, my brain was, I felt guilty. Once my ego was trying to say, you just wasted a ton of time. And these words mean nothing. They're just stupid feel good words that people throw around all the time. Oh, you know, yeah, you know, want to live an abundant life and oh, love and joy and peace. And you do get to the point where you hear it so much and stuff is written on coffee mugs and shirts and, and, and all this. And, and I have some of this on the, on coffee mugs and shirts, which is funny now, but my brain was saying, uh, you know, you're just wasting time and you're stupid. You're just still stupid. And Instead of just going to work and being responsible and doing what you need to do. So I did have that. I had a lot of that back and forth struggle in my mind. But I just thought I would I would share that piece with you. And I lasted a while. And and I'll be honest with you, even to this day, as I'm making this recording, those same feelings creep in uh, in a different way. Now I will justify it and say, okay, fine. Maybe the offering helped you and you're benefiting from it and you've been able to extrapolate or, you know, tap into the, to the code, the encoded wisdom in here and find a much deeper meeting. And that's all well and good, but now you're wasting your time trying to share it with others. So my ego, it's like, okay, I gave up one thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe it wasn't a hundred percent stupid. And maybe you benefited from it, but it's really stupid to try to share this with the rest of the world. And I still struggle with that now because I'll find people or try to share this with people. And the harder I try to push it out there, I will always find the people it doesn't connect with. I'm, I'm saying in the past that this is what's happened in, in the initial stages when I was trying to get it out there. I was looking for approval and so I, I need to prove that this is, but my ego was finding the wrong people almost deliberately instead of just allowing it to organically get the, get out there. I was trying to force it almost like my ego was playing a game like, all right, you want to get out there. Let's go out and find these people. And then I would go and, you know, brain would bring me to the wrong people just so, but the higher consciousness in me and my better judgment knows no you keep doing this even if um if i die and it doesn't resonate or connect until after i'm death so be it (laughs) it doesn't matter because there is really uh so much wisdom in here that you can that is captured in a single image that when you contemplate on this and pray on it and ask for answers it's in there everything you want for life and i want to go over all of that on these this radio show that doesn't exist yet so and we'll go over all the words and we'll get people involved that are going to call in and say an experience they had or something they're struggling with so that's what i want to do but my brain was always working against me and that's where you have to fight against that i don't even like to use that word fight actually Uh, you have to reject that and you have to have faith which is a word in the offering Uh, you need to have faith And know that those feelings and emotions and the ego really will never tell you what's best. The ego, your ego mind, 
if it's purely just if you, if you, your ego operating by itself, uh, not with a higher consciousness, will always lead you down the wrong roads. So anyway, as we continue on, here is what my goal and mission is, is to share this work with anybody that wants to engage with it, any curious mind, any willing participant who wants to talk about the deeper meaning of life and just kick around ideas and concepts and have fun talking about our greater purpose in in this uh, earthly realm and this human existence, spiritual existence. And, and I don't really care how clumsy it is or uh, it just, it's something we should all be talking about anything noble and good in terms of uh, our human potential with anybody, anywhere, at the bus station, at a coffee shop, at work, on break, you know, we don't do that enough. And we, so my objective now is to really push this work out, engage with people, get people involved and sharing their ideas, their experiences, their take on things, all with a, one common goal, uh, coming together and contemplating the mysteries of life and spreading love rather than fear, living the best and highest uh, purpose we can as humans. So the, the, the thing that's most important that, that I like to say is with respect to the offering and me as the uh, so-called custodian of this work uh, in, in my lifetime here, I personally use the offering as a guide for myself. I have never been able to live one day in perfect harmony, in pure harmony. Pure is a word in here, pure Harmony is a word. I have not been able to live in pure harmony with all of the 53 words at one time. And I don't know anyone that has been able to, that I've ever met. However, for me, it's, it is a guide and a roadmap because it is my pursuit. Just like people are in pursuit of happiness, it doesn't mean they're happy all the time, but you never, you never give up that pursuit. You have bad days, you have good days, but you, you people say, oh, I'm always striving for, 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 for happiness, health, wealth, and happiness. You have, you have these objectives in your life and goals, but it's nice to have a map. And a lot of times when we're in pursuit of happiness, we, we don't have the proper map. We may have a map that uh, marketing and social pressures and social engineering they provided the map. This is what's going to make you happy. And then when you do that and you you work on that for 10 years, you get there, you go to school, you go to college, you do all the things you're supposed to do. And then one day you wake up and say, why do I feel empty? And why am I unhappy? And if you have the wrong map, you're always going to wind up in the wrong place. And nobody, you know, most people aren't really interested in giving you the map for your happiness or giving you a map for their happiness or their objectives or their motives, uh, businesses, marketing, corporations, even family, religions. I mean, anybody, everybody has a motive and it, uh, so what I think, number one, the reason this is called the, the offering is because it's offered. It's, it's, uh, not pushed, pushed on anybody. It's, Every word in here is for self-empowerment, not for my self-empowerment at the exclusion of someone else. It's just everybody can can learn from this and grow from this and use it as a map for their own personal journey. And it will not conflict with anyone's religion, and it shouldn't, or anyone's career pursuit or family pursuits or whatever. If anything, this should complement it. But it is a map towards higher consciousness. And for me, it's the map. I want to know I'm going in that direction. Every day I make mistakes. Every day I say something silly or stupid and I have regrets and I still have my ups and downs and I have days where I'm just feel down in the dumps and, you know, 
and I have good days, but the days I'm having good days are the days I'm really living in this divine matrix of known as the offering. So I never want anybody to think to associate my name with the offering in terms of an example. I am happy to serve in as, as a personal example of someone who's made a ton of mistakes and all the wrong choices, but I never personally want to be looked up to as someone who's been there, done that. Oh, I'm a guru. No, that, that is actually something that would scare me if people ever started to, to, to associate the beauty and wisdom with the actual divine matrix, the offering and confuse that with Michael Brand. I'm just the, I am the messenger. I am the delivery my company is a delivery apparatus, a, a way, a vehicle to get this information out. But I am growing and learning just like every single person in the planet. We're, we're never done. And, you know, the funny thing is you think you've learned something and then years later you, you, you just have to keep. The more I know or the more I learn, the less I know. That, that's how that goes. Everybody's heard that. So... That's a key point I would like to uh, to mention. And just a little more clarity on how I use the offering and its purpose for me. It's a foundation, a moral code that I want to build my life upon. It, it has nothing to do with personal, personal dreams or aspirations or career goals and specifically but it, it is the foundation that all of that those other goals people have financial mental physical goals all of those other earthly aspirations we have if they're resting on a on a foundation a moral sound foundation that serves the mind body spirit and all of humanity and serves God, then I do believe when you pursue those individual goals you have, then they are very meaningful. It will be meaningful and will give you authentic happiness or joy or peace with the understanding of how the offering works. And and everything you do really, in my opinion, and the way I see it encoded in this work is that it has to serve has to serve your mind and your body, but also has to serve your spirit. So it's all in here together. And that's where the word cooperation, which is a word in the offering. It's the, it's the cooperation, full cooperation and harmony. In other words, your mind, your body, um, and your spirit. So this is the foundation that everything should rest upon. That's the way I take, take this work. And, uh, that's where I'm going to end it tonight, but I'm hoping this uh, gets easier because I, I'm going to keep going. Thank you for your, uh, your time t listening to this. and I hope you get something out of it, and I hope you can let me know with some feedback. I have no idea where this will be posted, so I can't even tell you where to go because I guess that will be, have to be links somewhere if you're watching this on YouTube or some other format, but you'll find a way it'll be presented somewhere. Somebody will tell me how to do that because I have no technical skills for this and I have no desire to, to learn about all, all that technical stuff. So thank you for your, your, uh, your feedback once the time is right.